Hey guys and welcome back to another Let's Draw with uh, Photoshop and Illustrator this time. Uh, today I'm going to be working on a tattoo idea that I've been having for myself. I uh, call the piece uh, Seven Deadly Sins. Uh, mostly the inspiration that comes from it is if you notice I'm going to have seven different uh, areas where the flesh is being pulled out and nailed down. And the co core concept of this idea that I want for possibly even a tattoo for myself is a uh, I'm going for, there's going to be a cross behind the flesh being pulled. And the idea is, we, I t I've noticed that a lot of times that uh, people were looking for kind of like salvation, for hope, for just kind of a glimmer of, of happiness. Well, a lot of times, due to life circumstances, uh, the ugliness of life can kind of foreshadow, can kind of over, uh, overcome you uh, a lot of times. So the idea behind it is the cross is behind and the flesh is being pulled in multiple different directions uh, due to sin, uh, which after time can sometimes trap you, make you feel trapped. That's why I'm going to have nails, like it's trapping the ugliness on top of the good. So that's kind of the core concept of it. It's, it's uh, just feeling overwhelmed and trapped by things that are not good for you. So this is kind of the idea that I've been having for a tattoo recently, and this is version one. Uh, originally, what I wanted to do was I wanted to kind of have a skull on top of it and the skin, you know, with the teeth and everything. And the more I kept drawing on this, the more I was like, well, you know, I kind of like it if it was going to have maybe no skull, you know, just like the flesh being ripped apart and kind of like just hanging loosely, like like there's no fight left. So as I was drawing this, I was still liking the skull idea, but uh, the more I was kind of playing with it, I was like, you know, I might redraw this into kind of just like loose skin and really see what else I can kind of come up with. But uh, since I had already gotten a little bit far in this one, I went ahead and decided, you know what, let's keep going. Uh, I'm liking this one. It'll be version one, and it'll be a great test run, uh, especially in uh, Illustrator and Photoshop. Um, I have just gotten a Wacom tablet. Normally I draw with uh, pen and paper, uh, pen and ink, uh, so I've never drawn before really digitally. Uh, this is really the, the first year that I picked up the Wacom pen and touch small. So I started practicing with that one to see if I could get a feel for it. Like, do I really like it? Can I get the hang of it? You know, drawing on a tablet, looking up at a screen, is it going to be awkward? Will I be able to do so? And I was actually surprised. Uh, yes, you can. It does take some practice, and I understand that if you can't get that at first. I myself couldn't. Uh, this is probably the sixth or seventh piece that I've actually drawn from, I guess you can say, start to finish. Everything else that I've been working on and everything, it's more just been practice. Like, how can I set up brushes? Looking up other tutorials, like, okay, how did you set up your brush? How did you set up your settings? And it's been stuff like that. It's just been a lot of trial and error. And that's the real good thing about digital art. You can always go back and change it. <laughs> Whenever you're working on pen and paper or pencil and paper, uh, sometimes you can get to a point where you can't really go back. So it's kind of frustrating after a while, like, God, I got to restart everything or or use some white out, or really erase and really get some lines uh, out of there, especially like if you drew some really deep darks. So that's what I really love about the Wacom tablet, is if I don't like a direction a piece is going, I can just control Z, and I can just really get into the, to the meat and say, okay, let's start over. I didn't like the way this was going, let's just get rid of it, and let's start over, let's try it again. So like here... Uh, what I'm doing, I'm just setting up my line art. That's pretty much all I do really right now with Illustrator. Um, I'm used to the comic book style of pen and ink with shading, but uh, I've been wanting to get into Photoshop. So this is actually my first piece that I'm going to lay everything out with line art and uh, with vector art using Adobe Illustrator to get everything the way, the way that I really like it. I'm going to drop my base color, which is what I'm doing here with the teeth. And once I've got my base color set, I'm going to export everything into a PSD file or a Photoshop file. And then I'm going to open it and use kind of clipping mask. 
And what that allows me to do is I'm going to have the paint already set so that I can go in there and do kind of like my airbrush or paint effects or my, well, yeah, like my paint effects. So with this piece, what I did is I allowed myself about three hours, I want to say, uh, just quickly get something down, draw it out, and then take it into Photoshop and let's see what we can get done as a speed paint uh, in Illustrator and Photoshop. And like I said, a lot of times I kind of draw like, okay, this piece is taking me this way, or I'm starting to see something else going on. So <clears throat> I will drop everything just to kind of see like, hey, I kind of like the direction this is going, let's continue, or I don't like it the way it's going, let's get rid of it and start up over. So here what I've done, I went ahead and brought it into Adobe Photoshop. I exported the vector art into a, to a PSD file. Now the difference between a vector and Photoshop document is Photoshop kind of gives it pixelation. So it gives a little fuzziness to your lines. In Illustrator, it uses math. It's really sharp, crisp lines, which makes it really good for like t-shirt designs, comic books, because it gives a really sharp edge, a clean edge. Photoshop gives you the ability to kind of blend your shadows, blend your colors, stuff like that. That's why it's really good for photo manipulation, like photographers, and stuff like this, like airbrushing or painting itself. Now, the reason I wanted to bring it into Photoshop is because I wanted to start playing with my shadow effects. Kind of like, let's actually do some shadows, some global shadows, um, how the skin would wrinkle, and just stuff like that. So that's what I went ahead and did with this piece was let's just get the base layers down which is the flesh tone the yellow for the teeth uh, the, sh the dark interior portion of the nostrils and the eye sockets and stuff like that let's just go ahead and get everything laid out and uh, as I've said in many of the videos I kind of draw on orthodox um, I kind of had an idea that I wanted to put across just a simplistic cross, a very minimalist cross behind it. I didn't want to give it shadows or anything like that. I wanted something very simple, like it's just something that shows kind of like a ghost effect. I wanted to put most of the detail on the foreground just to kind of show like we really let the bad consume over. So I just kind of wanted to do that, just a simplistic minimalist cross in the background. And once I did that, I started noticing the eye sockets, the nostrils, or where the nose would be, and the mouth. I really didn't need the darks. In fact, I kind of liked it without the darks, where it was just maybe the flesh. So what I'm going to do uh, at the end of the video is I'm going to go ahead and remove the, the darks in between uh, the mouth, nose, and eyes. That way everything can kind of show through. And here I started noticing that uh, I didn't put enough... Uh, detail into the nails. Uh, I know, I remember reading a long time ago that nails back then were more uh, box shaped. They weren't actually round because the blacksmith um, really couldn't make round. So more of your nails back in those days were kind of, I guess you can say, squarish or pyramid style looking. So that's why I kind of went with a square head instead of the traditional round head nails just to kind of do something different and just kind of maybe given a, a, a reference back to like way back in the day of Roman times and stuff like that. So here what I'm doing is I'm just practicing uh, dropping uh, some uh, highlight shadows, some lights and darks, you know, just to kind of make the piece pop just a little bit more. And you can see where I'm kind of playing around a little bit with some shadows, just kind of blending a little bit. Nothing too extravagant. I'm just trying to see what brush is working for me, what effects is starting to show the way that I really like. And again, like I said, this is technically my first second piece to actually paint in Photoshop. So I'm actually just testing everything out. Like, okay, let's draw some highlights with some colors, some greens, put some blend modes on it for like the lights. Uh, if you really look at skin and everything else, there's actual other colors going on other than just black and white and flesh tone. There's greens, there's blues, there's purples, there's everything else that actually is in the skin. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm just drawing some, or dropping some purples for the cool colors, some greens for some kind of like the highlights and stuff like that. 
And once I had everything set up, I just went ahead and just did a quick filter setup or just ran some quick filters, you know, just gave it a stroke on the on the cross with uh, some inner shadows and dro uh, outer drop shadows just to kind of give it a little bit of flavor and just to see what, uh, what I like after it came out. And there you go, folks. Uh, that is the start to finish from the Adobe Illustrator uh, concept sketch to the actual final render in Adobe Photoshop. This took about, I want to say, three hours, three and a half. I didn't want to spend an entire day on it. I wanted to quickly just get in there, drop some line art, pull the base colors in with the line art over, and kind of keep that line art really in the forefront, especially like with the tattoo. Tattoos, you got to have some kind of lines, hard lines, so that when you put the shading, the shading works with the tattoo. So that's why I opted to keep the line art from Illustrator because if I do get this as a tattoo um, they're gonna have to draw the hard lines the outline of it itself and then do the shading towards it so that's I think that's just more the style I'm gonna keep with uh, that way or whenever I do tattoos um, it'll translate over to a tattoo artist easier versus then okay well we're gonna have to find where the hard lines are gonna be due to your shading and we're going to have to work the, the the template in order for us to transfer your, to your skin. So I think that's the way that I'm definitely going to continue going, is keep hard lines and then shading underneath or on the base color. And don't forget, guys, if you got any comments or questions, don't forget to leave them in the comments section below. Uh, don't forget to rate, like, and subscribe, and I will talk to you all later.